Because no one is living happily ever after, that's why. Ah, and so, Pellegrina nodded. She is quiet for a moment. But answer me this. How can a story end happily if there is no love? But, well, it's late, and you must go to sleep. Pellegrina took Edward from Abilene. She put him in his bed and pulled the sheet up to his whiskers. She leaned close to him. She whispered, You disappoint me. After the old lady left, Edward lay in his small bed and stared up at the ceiling. The story, he thought, had been pointless, but then most stories were. He thought of the princess and how she had become a warthog. Ugh, how gruesome, how grotesque. What a terrible fate. Edward, said Abilene, I love you. I don't care how old I get, I will always love you. Yeah, 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 thought Edward. He continued to stare up at the ceiling. He was agitated for some reason that he could not name. He wished that Pellegrina had put him on his side so that he might look up at the stars. And then he remembered Pellegrina's description of the beautiful princess. She shone as bright as the stars on a moonless night. For some reason, Edward found comfort in these words, and he repeated them to himself. As bright as the stars on a moonless night, as bright as the stars on a moonless night, over and over until, at last, the first light of dawn appeared. So, friends, we've gotten um, to learn a little bit more about Edward, of course, this time, and about Pellegrina. And Pellegrina is kind of a mysterious character at this um, point in the story because she seems to know a lot about Edward and it almost seems like she knows what he's thinking um, and what he's feeling. And I want you to really keep in mind the story that she told um, Abilene and Edward really as we continue to read the story because the author will refer back to it and Edward is going to think about that story again uh, as his character progresses through the book. So stay tuned and we'll see or heal chapter five next time.